हेलो फ्रेंड्स ऑल यू कंस्ट्रक्शन टेक्नोक्रेट्स आर वेलकम टू कंस्ट्रक्नोज फोरम टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कैम्बर एंड प्री एस्ट्रेसिंग ऑफ ओपन वेब गर्डर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कैम्बर इज ऑफ एन नॉट वेल अंडरस्टूड बाई ब्रिज इंजीनियर्स एंड it is wrongly considered to give pre stressing forces in the members actually both the term are having different meaning and different purposes let us first understood camber and its necessity whenever a vehicle or live load passes through the bridge deck the bridge deck deflects downwards due to its elastic behavior this elastic deflection is highest when the vehicle is at mid span and when the vehicle approaches the pier the elastic deflection again return to its original position but when a vehicle longer than the length of bridge deck that is a train passes through the bridge deck the deflection reaches its maximum before the train reaches the next pier the result is that a train moving at high speed may experience shock and derailment providing camber is a functional requirement to avoid vertical impact under running trains the camber is given in such a way as to restrict sagging of the floor system when the live load passes over the bridges for this first of all we calculate the maximum deflection under the specified live load and then provide it in the opposite direction that is upward when train passes over the girder the floor system will become horizontal This is the ideal condition for which the truss has been analyzed. A perfect frame is that which is made up of members just sufficient to keep it in equilibrium when loaded without any change in the shape. The simplest perfect frame is a triangle which contains 3 members and 3 joints. When we connect all 3 joints of this frame through pins and if any one joint gets opened it becomes unbalanced but there will be only one position in this frame where these two members can be connected it is to be noted that the shape will not be distorted when the structure is loaded but when the frame is made of steel due to the elastic behavior of steel the length of the tensor member of the frame will increase and the length of the compression member will become smaller and hence the frame will also get slightly deformed and when we remove this load the frame returns to its original position to avoid this downward deflection during loading we need to deflect the frame in the opposite direction that is in the upward direction for this we first calculate the change in length of the member in the downward deflected condition and provide it to the member during fabrication of the member in the opposite direction and when we again apply weight on this frame this time it will return to its original position in instead of deflecting downward similarly when we talk about triangular steel truss bridge during the movement of train some members of truss are in tension and some are in compression and as a result the length of tension member increases in proportion to the magnitude of the force applied on the members while the length of compression member 
becomes smaller. Due to this elastic deformation in the length of the member, the truss gets deflected downwards. During the design itself, we calculate the change in length of these members in case of maximum truss deflection and provide them in the opposite direction which we call the camber length of the member. To provide camber in a truss, we have to calculate the camber length of each member during the design itself. Ultimately, when the girder is erected, the floor system automatically forms an upward sag. Now, we will discuss our second point. What is pre-stressing in open web girder and how it is provided in the field? In case camber is not provided, the deflected shape of the truss under live load will create additional stress in the members. These stresses are called secondary stresses. Pre-stressing is done intentionally in addition to camber to develop reverse kind of stresses in various members of the truss so that these members remain less stressed under moving loads. No additional material is required as the sectional area provided during design is sufficient to take these pre-stressing stresses. In fact, we can design the girders as cambered with or without pre-stressing. In case the girders are designed as cambered with pre-stressing, the secondary stresses are ignored, thus giving an economical design. When we talk about pre-stressing, the first thing that comes to our mind is the same pre-stressing that we have read or done before for PSE girders, while there is a lot of difference between the two. In the PSE girder, we insert the cable along the axis of the girder and lock it after pulling it in the linear direction as a result of which compressive stresses are created in the girder. But this does not happen in open web girder. In open web girder, pre-stressing is applied in the direction of angular rotation rather than linear. And the pre-stressing force is applied by rotating the truss members in the opposite direction rather than using external cables. When a truss deflects downwards under the live load, angular rotation occurs along with linear elastic deformation in the member. This rotation causes additional stress in the gusset. The primary stresses in the design of triangulated structures are defined as axial stresses in members calculated on the assumptions that all members are straight and free to rotate at the joints. All joints lies at the intersection of centroidal axis of the members. All loads including the weight of the members are applied at the joints. But in reality, these assumptions are not realized and as a result, members have to withstand not only axial stresses but also bending and shear stresses. These stresses are defined as secondary stresses and are divided into two groups. Stresses that typically result from eccentricity of the connections and of joint loading. For example, the load rolling directly over the cords, the self weight of the member and the wind load acting on the members. Stresses which are the result of elastic deformation of the structure and the rigidity of joint. These are known as deformation stresses. Structures are designed, fabricated and erected in such a manner as to minimize as far as possible secondary stresses. Secondary stresses 
which are the result of eccentricity of connections and of joint loading generally are computed and combined with the coexistence axial stresses but secondary stresses due to the self weight and wind on the members are ignored in non pre stress girders deformation stresses are assumed to be not less than 16.7% of the dead load and live load stress including impact in the case of pre stress girders deformation stresses may be ignored now we will understand how pre stressing forces is generated in the joint of a truss due to rotation in the members during deflection the rivet holes of the members try to deviate from the holes in the gusset resulting in secondary stress in the joint when we provide camber in the truss this deviation occurs in the opposite direction we can correct this deviation in two ways either we drill the gusset holes at the deviated locations during fabrication itself or rotate the members during erection to match the holes made in the gusset if we adopt the first method that is drill the gusset holes at the deviated location during fabrication itself then no pre stress will be generated in the joint and the truss will be a non pre stress girder whereas when we adopt the second method that is rotate the member during erection to meet the holes made in the gusset then pre stresses is generated in the joint in the opposite direction we call this stress as pre stressing of open web girder when a train passes through this bridge deck this pre built pre stressing becomes insignificant i hope the concept of camber and pre stressing of open web girder is now clear to you please subscribe this channel so that you can get notification whenever a new video is uploaded in the next meeting we will discuss extra dose breeze till then jai hind jai bharat